What's up guys, Clack here with another guide and today we're gonna do an Enhancement Shaman and just like my Rest of Druid, for whatever reason, I don't know if PP is just that dead, there was no PvP Rest of Druid guide videos out there, not a single one, besides Subatis, and that was posted like weeks ago. And this video, I had the same issue. When I started playing Enhancement Shaman, I tried looking for guides and all I could find was PV. No one gives a poo-poo about PvP. It actually made me really sad. So I actually had to make my own guide to help you guys because I needed help and no one was there. So here's my guide to help you. So this isn't going to be like the 100% the best thing. I'm sure there's going to be some things you can swap. Again, any guide that's posting anything right now, it's not going to be 100% correct. That's something you guys got to remember. 100% any guide because stuff is going to change with a, a small patch uh, that they won't release could change totally how the spec is played. I know in my last video as a rested druid, I said some things and some people disagreed with and that's totally fine. Again, you're probably not gonna agree with everything in this video. I'm sure I'll maybe from a few weeks from now, look back on this and be like, yeah, that was a mistake. All right, let's go ahead and go over the basics. We're gonna go ahead and go over the talents. First, I run Elton with Blast. Uh, I know for PV, you're gonna run Frostal Winds. For the next, Aurel, you're going to run Storm Fleury, and this is probably going to be the biggest one. The other two seem really good, but most of your damage comes from Storm Strike anyway, so this is a must. And for the next row after that, I'm going to run Spirit Wolf. You could probably run into Earth Shield, but if you run into Earth Shield, that means you can't run your Lightning Shield. So that means your Maelstrom procs are going to be suffering just a little bit. So it's up to you if you find it worthy to run. Elmet Assault, Nature's Guardian. Here's the road that really kind of tilts me is like they put our mobility with our survivability. If this was on any other row, I probably would have taken it. If it was on the first row, I would actually be kind of happy about that. I just wish they would swap this up a little bit because we struggle as enhanced to have mobility. Our only source of mobility is our spirit walk right here. As you see, let me pop it. That's it. And it doesn't even like it removes your first root slash snare. But after that, they can slow you again and root you again right after. So... It's not very good. So yeah, Nature Guardian is probably going to do the best because we enhance already lack survivability. So this is a must. And for the row below that, you're going to run Sundering. Sundering does a decent amount of damage and can do a cleave sort of and also incapitate your opponent. So it acts as like a stun. So it's very nice for interrupt heals or a cast that you don't want to go off. So you can use it as that or you can just use it simply for damage and then for the next row this is a row that you can swap between two and it's earthen spike and ascent so basically if you want more consistent pressure you're going to run earthen spike again this is going to boost your your storm strikes this is going to boost your storm strikes you run ascendance this is also going to be really bursty but it's a three minute cooldown seems like a very long time especially with the short matches i've actually been running ascendance a lot and i feel like i have more win rates in 2v2 and 3v3 with Ascendance, then Earthen Spike, but maybe as gear is handed to us, this will change because our HP will go up and everything like that. For the next row, this is the default. You run a Ride of the Lightning, Shamanism, and Grounding. So what you can swap in between these three is, normally you would swap Ethereal Form uh, with Grounding. If you're facing like a melee team and they don't have any, they don't have any casters, Ether Reform, you're going to get a lot of value. It lasts 19 seconds, and it makes you invortable, and it's a 45-second cooldown. It's actually super strong. It's crazy strong. And for the Legendary, there is quite a few good Legendaries actually for Enhancement Shaman. You could probably play around a few with them. You could play with, uh, there's a, one that gives you a Sentence proc right here. Yeah, right here. Using a Storm Strike has a 5% chance to activate a Sentence for 6 seconds. This is pretty RNG. I'm sure you can get some use out of that if you're just trying to meme build. Uh, the Wind Fairy also looked very juicy. I was playing with it. It's not that good. It's not that good. So the best one I came across is this one right here. I think it's on another piece, but uh, consuming five stacks of Maelstrom weapon will reset the cooldown in your Storm Strike. It causes your next Storm Strike to deal 100% increased damage, which is actually insane. So if you imagine this with Ascendance, anytime you get a five stack proc, you can use in a lightning bolt, boom, your storm strike is reset, and that is your biggest damage. So I would have to say that legendary is probably by far going to be the best. Again, there are some good other ones you can play around with and just if you're just trying to have fun with a meme build. So with the covenant, the vent hero, you get chain harvest and you also get a door of shadows. So it puts a little port. Boom, it's nice. And obviously, with the conduit that you run, it will do that little circle as you saw. It AoE fears everyone in that little circle, so it's not bad. 
So when you get five stacks of your Maelstrom, you are able to use Chain Harvest instantly. So it will give you a little heal and obviously it will do big amount of damage. I've hit people for 9,000 with this. 9,000 is like a fourth or a third of people's HP. So that is pretty nice burst. So if you line up with your Ascendants, again, adding more additional damage to it, it, you can do some crazy burst. For the conduits, I ran on the left side. I went Focus Lightning. The Maelstrom weapon increases the damage of healing of your next spell by an additional 4% per stack. So any spell that you use that uses up your Maelstrom, if you have five stacks, it'll increase the damage by 20%. So it's actually very, again, very, very big. You can use it to increase your Train Harvest. You can use it to increase your Elemental Blast. You can use it to increase your Lightning Bolt. Very strong ability. So the next one, I went Ghost Wolf, increase your movement speed by additional 10% for the first three seconds. May only occur every 60 seconds. Again, all the stuff that you see that we're going over is a upgradable thing. And one item I didn't add yet because we're not able to upgrade any of our conduits is Totemic Surge. And as you read it, it reduces the cooldown of your Tremor, your Earthbind, and Cap Totem by one second. So you're going to be able to upgrade this, increasing the value. I don't know what level you're going to be upgrade this to. But obviously, since this helps out our Tremor, which is probably one of the biggest parts of a Shaman, is be able to get our whole team out of fear so you can get your healers out. It's a, it's a huge resource as a Shaman. For the next one, again, since one of our biggest damage dealer effect is from Chain Harvest, I went into increase the chance of it to crit by 10%. And if you guys don't know, Chain Harvest, whenever it crits, it also reduces the cooldown of it by 5%. So if you crit in three people, you're going to reduce the cooldown by 15%. So it's just like an extra added bonus to it. After that, I went and then really wins, which increases your chance for your Wind Fury to proc a third attack by 40%. So it seems pretty basic, right? All the stuff we went over. Again, if you don't like what I have, you can go ahead and change it up. But it is the rough idea. I'm going to go over the macros and slash key bindings I have because I always get questions about that. So on the top right, as you can see, I have a dispel macro for myself. I dispel for party one and party two. I have purge macros for arena one, two, three. I have hex macros for arena one, two, three. I have a wind shear of my target that I'm targeting and also a set focus. And then the only other macro that I have after that is my bloodlust. And for key bindings, I use a lot of my key bindings on my mouse. If I didn't have this mouse, I wouldn't be able to do half of these. If you guys don't have a large button in the mouse, you're gonna have to obviously use a lot more on your keyboard, which is gonna make it very difficult. I love this mouse. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Love to be sponsored, but these are a deal breaker, I feel like, for PvP. This is the only game I ever use this mouse for, but it's a deal breaker nonetheless. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and sub button. And as always, get out there and pwn some nubs.